Welcome to another AR capsule for the Shankar AAS Academy. Today we'll talk about the crisis in Kazakhstan. The crisis in Ukraine is still raging and we have no idea what it will lead to. Fortunately, the Russians and the Americans are talking and uh, there is no likelihood of a flare-up. But the expectation or the concern is that the Russians might stage a coup inside Ukraine and create uh, a structure which would be inimical to uh, the interests of Ukraine itself. That is the fear. Uh, but let's hope that that will be settled peacefully. But surprisingly, a rebellion has broken out in Kazakhstan, uh, which is one of the, not the one of the, the largest uh, Central Asian country. It was the largest uh, Soviet with uh, great resources in terms of uranium, in terms of petroleum, and very, very many other minerals and uh, other resources. Uh, it had, or it has now, 40% of the global uranium deposits and 3% of petroleum deposits. And the per capita income in 2020 was 9,000 US dollars. So significant country, fairly uh, prosperous, uh, sparsely populated, with very, very rich resources and fairly peaceful. That was the situation of Kazakhstan when it became an independent country 30 years ago. But one thing that happened in the case of several of the Soviet republics, which became independent, was that in the guise of new democratic leaders, some of the old leaders continued, uh, but they persisted with their dictatorial attitudes and administrative style. And one of them was the leader of uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Noor Sultan Nazarbayev. He was already a leader in the Soviet Republic, but then when the country became independent, he assumed charge and ruled the country for 30 years. And in the process, he uh, imposed a kind of dictatorial regime and not a democratic regime in Kazakhstan. And uh, there were very many issues relating to uh, freedom, human rights, discrimination, et cetera, et cetera. And it took a long time for it to materialize and the people to realize that this was a dangerous situation. And in 2019, there was a uprising against him within his own party as well as outside, saying that uh, he must be removed. So he was removed, but the new president who took over, Mr. Tokayev, <clears throat> was a confident, confidant of uh, the previous uh, president. And though nominally he became president of Kazakhstan, Mr. Nusabrayev continued to hold several positions in the state, particularly related to security. This was not a happy arrangement everybody knew, but still, since President Tokayev was very close to him, he wanted to give him importance and power in the new structure. And this has been the ruin of uh, the new president because the previous one continued to exert influence and he had become very unpopular. This is the background of the present situation which developed in late 2021 and early 22. Uh, the population structure was that um, about um, how many Russians were there? Um, 35, 35 lakhs of Russian migrants 
live in Kazakhstan. And this was something that they had done at the, during the Soviet time itself. Because in order to integrate these republics, they sent a lot of Russians into these republics to make substantive minorities so that they protected the unity of the Soviet Union. So many Russians were sent to these republics to act as some kind of a unifying factor for the Soviet Union. When Kazakhstan became independent, they continued because there was no threat to them. And Kazakhstan and Russia had uh, excellent relations. And um, you know, therefore, the, these Russians continued there happily and there was no real you know, conflict. Uh, Russia has a border of about 7,600 kilometers of the border, uh, but there was no armed forces, there were no armed forces there, either of Kazakhstan or of Russia, because it was a very peaceful border, and um, there was no need for any uh, deployment of uh, forces on the border, and that was another positive element. Uh, but when the situation deteriorated, mainly because of the economic situation, and uh, rise in prices consequent upon the COVID-19, which has ravaged the whole world. So Kazakhstan was no exception. And therefore the, uh, the damage caused by COVID-19, which is raging in Kazakhstan even now, had created a lot of problems for the people. And they started attributing all these economic problems, particularly rise in the price of petrol. They have so much of petroleum, but the ordinary people could not afford the prices in the market. And Mr. Tokave was not able to control the uh, consequences of this. And um, the, the economic collapse as it were because of the uh, price of oil and other products and the lowering standards of, of life, and also foreign direct investment came down considerably. Foreign direct investment came mainly from Russia, of course, and also from Europe. In fact, if you look at the map and look at Kazakhstan, you will find Kazakhstan is as big as the whole of Western Europe. So it's not small. And with this possibility of exploitation of resources, a large number of European Union countries were investing in Kazakhstan. So into the situation broke up this rebellion and uh, very quickly spread to the whole country. And um, because the numbers are not large by the standards of these days in other countries, in the rebellion, 98 policemen were killed 26 protesters were also killed and about 353 people injured. And the Kazakhstan forces, whether it is police or the army, was not able to control the rebellion. So it reached a point when the president Tokayev turned to the Russian president and requested for assistance. In fact, there is a treaty between the two countries, not only between the two, but Russia with several of these um, East Asian, Central Asian republics, Central Asian countries, an agreement for mutual defense. And it's not been used very much, but uh, in this particular case, uh, Russia, thinking about what was happening in Ukraine, uh, perhaps uh, immediately sent troops into, into Kazakhstan. And um, the number of troops arriving in Kazakhstan has not been announced, but uh, they suppressed the rebellion very quickly and uh, brought about peace. Uh, President Tokayev announced that uh, the Russian troops will be leaving as soon as the situation is back to normal, but there is no sign as yet of them leaving, and that has raised a question. So 
the grievances against President Tokai was increased that now he has also brought the Russian forces into the country. And so he is under tremendous pressure to bring about more changes. He has promised uh, a reform, but um, there is no sign of abatement either of the pandemic or of the economic problems which, has, which have engulfed uh, Kazakhstan. So Kazakhstan is in crisis on various uh, factors, including uh, the presence of the Russian troops and the Americans have been um, expressing concern that the Russians may not leave Kazakhstan in a hurry if at all. So the fear is also among the, in, in, in Russia because of the open border of 7,600 kilometers, there could be refugees from Kazakhstan entering Russia because of the economic situation. And there could be also spread of COVID-19. So that's a concern that Russia has. And therefore, they may have um, strengthened the border. They so may not have deployed forces, but uh, they have started monitoring the border to make sure that the problems in Kazakhstan do not spread into, into Russia, which is a possibility. And the European Union is, uh, is concerned that their uh, investments um, may not bring the benefits and they cannot just pull out like that in the current situation and therefore the European Union is also very concerned. In all this is also China. Um, Kazakhstan had uh, maintained good relations with China also, even though their primary loyalty was to Russia. And with China-Russia relationship improving in the last uh, couple of years, the Chinese were quite comfortable there. And um, they were, of course, in, involved in the um, exploitation of resources. Because this area, you need the heavy investment to get the resources out of the earth. And um, so China was involved. There are other countries also, Japan and the European countries and others. Uh, but China is also a little bit concerned about the situation uh, because if it deteriorates, uh, deteriorates uh, China will also have uh, problems there. So the president of China has written a letter to President Tokayev suggesting that he should handle the political and the economic situation effectively and also hinting that if there is any help needed, China will be happy to extend that. Because I don't think Kazakhstan will ask for it because they would not want to bring China and Russia into their soil with this uh, uh, possibilities of uh, complications arising out of this. After all, both are big powers and uh, both of them in the, in the same area may not be very helpful to the country. And there are also reports that the Chinese foreign minister discussed the matter with uh, um, the uh, foreign minister of Russia. So they have given, seen this uh, new dimension of Russian interest and involvement. And therefore, China has also served notice on Russia uh, to be careful and not to annex uh, Kazakhstan that, like they are trying to do with uh, Ukraine. But there, is, there are no signs like that because the situation in Kazakhstan is somewhat a different and Russia has no such ambitions as of now, provided the trouble doesn't uh, uh, spread. The allegation made raised by the Kazakhstan president that uh, some foreign Muslim terrorists participated in the rebellion was of some concern, though this has not been established. And also, also was that there were slogans raised against the uh, United States. Um, India, as you know, has good relations with us, all the Central Asian countries. And um, we are members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization together with China. And uh, we have particular interest in the Central Asian countries. And Kazakhstan was, of course, the most, is the most important of them. 
Uh, and this interest has increased because of the situation of Afghanistan, uh, because the Central Asian countries have certain identity of views with India on what is happening in Afghanistan. Uh, you may remember that a meeting of uh, uh, the representatives of these countries was held in Delhi, and they all came and discuss certain matters relating to Afghanistan. And they agreed with us that there should be a representative, peaceful government in Afghanistan. And terrorists, terrorists should be removed from the government and uh, peace should be established and independence of Afghanistan should be uh, re-established. But at the same time, these countries have contacts with the Taliban and like us. And there was some expectation that uh, they might help India to have a dialogue with Taliban or to normalize relations in the, in the long run. Uh, but India and these countries have uh, cooperated in providing humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan even in the current situation. And more recently, all of them were invited, all the heads of state of these five countries were invited to the Republic Day which is to take place in the next couple of days. But uh, the situation in India, nor in these countries, will permit such a visit. And it has been confirmed that they will not come to Delhi for the Republic Day, but will hold a virtual summit with our Prime Minister one of these days, maybe on the Republic Day itself. So there was anxiety as to whether Mr. Tokai will be able to come in the new circumstances. But that problem has been solved uh, because of the, of the COVID-19, which started the problem in the, in the first place. So India is not directly involved in this. We are not present in uh, the country, except some experts, etc. cetera. Uh, but this can be of concern to us and we are observing the situation very closely. There are so many interpretations about what is happening. And uh, one of the comments I heard was that this is a quarrel among thieves because um, the, the leadership of Kazakhstan, including the previous president and present president, and they all seem to be involved in some kind of a conspiracy or some kind of uh, racketeering, etc. These are just reports. We cannot uh, uh, give any credence to that. So it doesn't look as though the situation will normalize very fast because of all these elements, the Chinese influence, the Americans wanting the Russians to leave immediately, uh, the presence of uh, foreign uh, terrorists and the concern about Afghanistan. So all this is a rather dangerous mix in Kazakhstan, which was a peaceful and prosperous country. So there is reason for everyone to be concerned, but unlike Ukraine, the situation is more stable and Russia's intentions are honorable. And it is expected that uh, they would leave Kazakhstan as soon as the situation permits. On that score also, there is some concern in the United States because with all the uh, European Union's uh, investments, they do not want Russia to exert too much of authority inside Kazakhstan. So everyone is watching with uh, concern, but with less concern than about Ukraine, because in Ukraine, some war could take place, but here there is no, no such, uh, such danger. Uh, but uh, this is a situation that uh, you should follow because it is a live situation and uh, you will have news coming out of Afghanistan in the near future. Thank you very much. There are threats. People are comparing to the Ukrainian situation to that of 1962 between, between US and Soviet Union in Cuba. You know, very highly tense situation and it could have broken into a nuclear war, but I don't think it is that serious. But Ukraine has very, made it very clear that if uh, um, 
If, yes, Russia has made it very clear that if Ukraine joins NATO, they will prevent it in some way or the other. And US has said that uh, no such intervention will be permitted. So there is a certain amount of ultimatum involved, but no time-based ultimatum. No, 30 years of misrule is the main issue and is continuing influence in the present administration. And the gas prices and deterioration of the economy and, uh, and uh, even the COVID itself are considered to be flowing from the misrule of 30 years. And that is the question that everybody is asking. That is because there has been some. That's why I said someone said that this is a quarrel between the thieves. Uh, it is not ex, not been explained as to why it happened. And the rebellion took place because the people were not convinced that this was not artificial. Well, this is the question we ask whenever anything happens anywhere in the world. <laughs> But we are not a superpower going around to solve problems of the other countries. And uh, we have had good relations with them and beneficial relations. And we'll try to maintain it without intervening. And uh, we can also depend on Russia because our good relations with that country, that we'll not be dragged into this. So we'll simply wish them well. Because they were not expecting Something like this. They should have expected, though, because the previous president was ousted because of this. Uh, but obviously, they were optimistic and did not expect that this would happen. So it will affect all of us, as I mentioned. Kazakhstan, more than anybody else, can also spill over to Russia. It can affect the um, the business of the European Union. It can create complications for China and also to India because of the interruption in the, in the commerce that we have with them. We have even received uranium supplies from Kazakhstan and that also is a factor. Well, external attack, probably that is the reason why the and Kazakhstan is alleging that there were uh, foreign terrorists involved in the demonstration. That may be a technical explanation. The truth is that there is internal revolt on account of uh, the poor administration and perhaps corruption. Uh, but uh, the deployment of the CTO, CSTO forces um, was possible because of this allegation. And uh, that may be the excuse that the Russians used in order to go to the support of Kazakhstan under the CSTO. I thought we had spoken about it earlier. It is simple as that. It was noticed that uh, for some months early this year and uh, late last year, Russians were amassing troops on the borders of uh, Ukraine. And uh, this, was re this had reached a very high level, and there was concern all over the world. And it was clarified by Russia that no, they had no intention to invade Ukraine. They respect Ukraine's sovereignty. But there is a certain red line, which is that Ukraine should not be uh, admitted as a member of NATO. Well, this was an understanding there at the time of the breakup of the Soviet Union, an informal kind of understanding that these republics will not become part of the, of the Western alliances. But some, like the Baltic republics, became part of the Western alliance. But of that, Russia did not mind too much because it's a bit far away from their borders. Uh, but in the case of Ukraine, uh, Russia is very keen. and it's, it's a large country rich in resources too. And they did not want it to fall into, they were discussing trade, trade packs with the European Union, even that they resisted. And then this whole question of NATO membership. Because nobody is saying that they will take them to NATO. 
but um, the intentions are clear and no assurance is being given by the Americans or the others that will not happen. So there is a crisis point there, uh, but hopefully it will be resolved because this is not the time when anybody wants to go to war. So there is no fear that will break out, a war will break out there, but the tension still persists as long as the roads, but the Russian troops are still on the border. But the Russians are, of course, saying that they are in their own country. They are not invaded. But the president of Ukraine has been saying that it is not only a matter of Russian troops, but also Russian interests operating inside Ukraine. In fact, he had announced that uh, in December, he announced that there could be a coup, a civilian coup of some rich people in Ukraine favoring the Russians and trying to establish uh, authority in, uh, in Ukraine. This is true because there are certain parts of Ukraine which are under the influence of Russia. And uh, that is the fear they have. But all these still exist. You no know, situation has not changed, but hopefully it will be resolved. Thank you. Bye-bye.